In this video we're going to talk all about groups. I'm going to go over making a status update into a group, adding members to a group, adding resources to a group, uh, working with media albums in a group, and the options, uh, the settings options for your group setup. Uh, for example here I have a Rocco test setup group and to make a status update I can simply type in here. Make sure that uh, you model things well. There we go, capital T, and I have my rich text editing and my attach attachment buttons all set. I also have the ability to cross post to my professional Twitter or Facebook account. When I'm all done, I can hit post. If I don't like this, uh, I can always edit it and adjust it or delete my post. Uh, students have, uh, people have the ability to comment on this by clicking on the comment button or they can like it. These settings can be adjusted in the options settings that I'll show you at the end. To add members to this group, I can simply go to the members button, select add members, and I can manually pull people in. I'm going to pull in Austin Moore. So I'm going to highlight him. I may have to search for him in the right building. But this button right here says add members without an invite. I'm actually going to check that and I'm just going to manually pull him in. If I want him to be an administrator of the group, I can use the gear button to make him an administrator. And I will confirm that and now he has administrative privileges just like me. If I don't want him in this group, uh, well if I don't want him as an administrator, I can remove the admin and I can also remove him from this group. What about those groups where we have a whole bunch of people in them uh, and you don't want to add them one by one? We have some groups with 500 students in them. Well, this is the access code that you could give to students and they will grab that, add that in under the groups join. They'll add this code and they'll be able to be in, that co in, in this group. As administrator, I can have... Um, I can select this button and that will make me as the administrator have to OK everyone before they're allowed in even though they've used this code. Let's go on to resources. Uh, right here in the resources these work just like the materials in the um, courses. Instead of add materials it says add resources. So I can add folders. This is always good to organize things in folders. I can add an assignment template and add a test or quiz template. These are templates because gradebooks are not connected to uh, groups, only to courses. I can also add a discussion template, but I can keep files and links, uh, web pages, external tools. These are really good to use with Google Docs, by the way. I can make rubrics that I can push out later to my courses, and I can make badges, too, that I can share with other members of this group. We can also have a question bank. I can uh, basically have a folder full of test and quiz questions that I can pull a few from or randomly from. That's about it. Uh, let's go on to albums. So media albums are great for staff buildings and, and um, student information groups or fuel up. All these other things, these media albums are great. In order to add an album, I'm going to go to Add Album. And I'm going to give it a title and a description. And down below, I have to make a choice. Do I want my other group members to be able to comment on this album and pictures? And do I want my other members to be able to add media to it? That's a decision you have to make. Uh, this can be a very collaborative thing or just a show-off sort of media album. When I'm done, I'm going to hit Create. Now it's going to say, hey, let's attach some files to that media album. So I'm actually going to just take uh, these six files and upload them. I did a Shift click there, selected the top one, held down Shift. Oh, we have an unsupported type of file, so I'm going to just get rid of that one. I'm going to click Add Media, and you can see that my pictures have shown up. And I can also add captions to each one of them. So if I go there, I can write about each one of these pictures. 
So I'm going to go back to my album here, back to my eMedia album. So you can see that this is the album I created. I called it Title. There's five photos in it, and there they all are. If I select one, I can see it. I can, because I allowed comments, people can comment on it. People can tag this photo with a certain name or a person. You can also uh, download this folder. Oh, you can also you can also navigate through by going to next and previous. These don't have to be pictures because these can actually be videos too. Now let's go visit the options of my group. I'm going to go to Group Options, Edit Privacy, and Group Settings. Right down here are my other settings. Post Group Updates, All Members or Just Admins? Well, I'm going to just have it just me because I'm work maybe in this group I'm working with students and I don't want them to have the ability to write anything they think on there. How about comment to those updates? Yeah, I think it's a good idea that students can comment to what I post. That makes sense. Create discussions? Well, maybe just me because I don't want my students making a billion conversations and using it as a chat center. Or maybe I do. How about create resources? In this situation, only group admins can add to the resources area. Sometimes you may want to have all members, students and staff, or all staff members uh, have the ability to create resources. These are all decisions that you have to make based on the purpose of your group. But when you're done, hit Save Changes.